Hello again, Lincolnshire. How you doing? Happy New Year, 2021. Hopefully it will be a better year. Doesn't seem like it at the moment, but hopefully um, days are darkest before the dawn and we'll return to some sort of normality. Anyway, this is the third video I've been doing for aviation heritage learning. I am Ash Dickinson. I'm a performance poet. Uh, I'm performed in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, America, Spain, Jordan, Germany, the Czech Republic. Uh, during these strange lockdown days, I have run workshops in Spain and the Czech Republic and even in Denmark. It's amazing where you can go to from, from your own front room. I have um, had this book published and uh, this book published and this book published. And I've been making a living as a poet for um, 13 years now. And uh, we're going to do a bit of poetry writing. But before that, I thought I'd share a poem. Break you in, warm you up, warm me up. This one. Uh, I don't know if any of you are on Twitter, but on Twitter things can, can, can just explode from, from, from nothing. And someone was writing on there about how their skin was waterproof. And someone else said, I, th I think you mean water resistant. And then someone else said, no, I think it is waterproof. And this obviously blew up into something. And I thought, hang on, forget all this. What if your skin wasn't waterproof? That was my idea. I wrote this. My skin isn't waterproof. It is made of a fiber similar to cotton. One proof? Leave me out in a thunder plump. See me transforming into someone who survived a parachute jump without a parachute. Falling, falling, splat, spread flat, wrapped in my own tarpaulin. In sodden bags for life, bags of arms and bags of chest, gripped in sodden tote bag hands, I limp dragged that squelchy sack back home like an accidentally shot hunting buddy, to lay in a radiator once again like a pampered cat until the reservoir drains. Recovery time for a bath is vast. Pre work I must set an alarm four hours early. Drying time is reduced in summer months, where I elbow the lizards for room on a flat rock by the back door. Fill every crevice in my form, pour its horror to celestial body, 90 million miles away and crinkled dry like an arrow wash lottery ticket. My skin isn't entirely permeable, open season for microorganisms. The outer layer lets everything through, but the hypodermis is a seawall. My organs, like yours, are an adventure of shuttings, holidaying indoors while my outer skin disperses, pining for the coast. One day, I hope to meet an understanding woman. Open to a move to Death Valley, a thrill seeker maybe, girlish and giddy, white water riding my knee to Shangri-La to where Christ the Redeemer stands open armed as the skies cave in. She will know me like fingerprints, and when the rains were lent, she will come back to me and stay comfortable in my skin. We're looking today at the Battle of Britain, which was a uh, military campaign fought during the Second World War. A period between July and October 1940, in which the RAF, using Spitfires and Hurricanes, defended the skies over the south of England against large-scale assaults by the Luftwaffe, Nazi Germany's air force. It was an important victory in the war, forcing Adolf Hitler to abandon invasion plans. Hopefully you've watched the Exhibition Learning Project video on the Battle of Britain and the artworks being toured from the Imperial War Museum. If not, I suggest you pause this video here Watch that one and return to here. Uh, don't worry, I'll be waiting. You won't miss a thing. We're going to use two of those paintings as pictorial stimuli. This is my, my third video for Aviation Heritage Lincolnshire. On the other two, I've discussed in brief tips for writing. I'm, I'm not going to do that here. Only to say in this case, partly write what you see. This is a take on TV's catchphrase for those of you who've had that inflicted upon them. And also think about the senses, the sights, the sounds, the smells, etc. These bring something to life, lift it off the page, uh, make it more tangible. We're going to use a form called a nonet. If you've ever written a haiku, there are echoes here. It is like haikus to do with syllables. There, there are the beats within a word. The word sil, la, bull has three. My name, Ash, has one. Stephen two, Mohammed three, uh, me, Lee, uh, four, Hippopotamus five, uh, a less common first name that. Uh, these poems have descending syllables, nine, 
eight, seven, right down to one. You might think they descend like a, an aircraft. Here are some examples of mine. So this is the nonette, descending syllables. None on the first line, eight on the second, right down to one on the last. I've chosen this form because it can be dramatic, claustrophobic, the syllables running out, um, heading onward to a conclusion. Also, you can make it a shape poem. On most occasions, the line length will be longest at the top and shortest at the bottom. So it looks um, like a triangle, like a, effectively like a plane's wing. Here's a couple of examples of mine. If you've ever been to Chesterfield, you may have seen this spire on one of its churches. There are many stories how it came to be crooked, but my favourite is that the devil sat on top of it, wrapped its long tail around the spire, and as it unwrapped it, it twisted it into this shape. Uh, a less fanciful, fanciful explanation is that it was caused by lead expanding on unseasoned wood. Your lines can stand alone, like in the seven-syllable line, or they can wrap around enjambment, this is called in poetry, like in the nine to the eight, the four to the three, etc. Where you place your words can alter meaning. Also, give thought to words with dual meaning. Plans lent to rest on, but also to topple. Pinnacle and peak, a highest point in, in both regards. Crooked, the architect being dishonest or the wood being crooked. And at the end, luck's inspired. The inspiration came by luck. Your luck is in. The spire of the church. And, and one more. A friend of mine's son is obsessed with ocean life. Uh, I'd long ago thought of the wordplay aficionado. It's not spelled like this. An aficionado is someone who is very knowledgeable and enthusiastic about something, like he is. In this case, I've subverted the spelling to spell fish. This is about him dreaming at night between being awake and being asleep and his dad watching him protectfully. Note again the wordplay, his bed and the seabed, the extended metaphor of marine life, and all the rhythm in it that helps its lullaby, um, the rhymes in it that help its lullaby rhythms. These are two of the paintings from the previous Battle of Britain video. You're going to use these as inspiration for a nonette. You might want to just use one or combine them both. The dogfight in Over the Target might have been where the vapor trails are in an aerial battle. Write what you see. Write what you imagine. Consider the pictures. What do they say to you? You'll have nine syllables in your first line, going down to just one in your last. Your lines can wrap around, but there are plenty of good one-syllable words that you might want to use to end it. Uh, fire, death, win, flight, home, love, hope, now, aim, peace, etc, etc. You don't have to start with a nine-syllable line when you're writing. If you've got a good five-syllable line, right, start there. Uh, write that first and work backwards and forwards. If you've got an ending, write that and go in reverse. Write just now down in your margins, nine on the first line, then eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Use these pictures for inspiration. Only settle when you're happiest. Edit and edit and rewrite and rewrite. And happy writing. And teachers, uh, please pause the video here. Thanks. And we're done. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed that. A lot of people have turned to poetry during lockdown as, a, as an expression and an outlet. If you don't normally write poetry and you've surprised yourself and you enjoyed that, please keep writing. It's something you can have forever. So, um, thank you, Aviation Heritage. Thank you, teachers, for your input. Please keep writing. And until we meet again, chocks away.